Hi guys, Danny is with you again. Sometimes you want to distance yourself from the world outside the window, from work or study, just immerse yourself in some other fantasy world. In short, I want to play something single, without other players, and with full immersion. Today I will show you the games where to do it best. Therefore, click on like, click on the subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, well actually, let's go. I suggest starting with the game that I mentioned in the last video. This is Outcast, a new beginning. The game greets us with a fucking beautiful world, adequate combat, and a curious setting in the form of a mixture of advanced technology and magic. But also a confusing interface and a rather lengthy introduction, the game is revealed only when we are released on Freebread into the open world. And this is about two hours after the start, we have an action RPG in front of us. Moreover, the game is quite fun, and moving around the world is like an anthem with the help of flights. In addition, I liked that the developers left the old feature of the first part, when aborigines actively use local terms in conversation, which you need to remember in order to understand them well. In the first part, it was good for the atmosphere. Probably the main problem of the game is that you need to get used to it and learn to play it, and modern players do not like this. And here, in front of you, is a wonderful rogue trader, isometric RPG. I definitely recommend this game even to non-Warhammer fans. Purely in terms of gameplay and narration, the game is interesting, and all historical moments can be read, so for those who want to get to know Warhammer, the game will become a leader. The game offers us a lot of activities so that none of them have time to get bored. They alternate competently so that you will not get tired of either fighting or reading. In addition to ground-based tactical battles and dialogues, the game also features space battles, moving around the global map with random events and managing your planets. You have three paths of development, and each has its own unique plot features, a familiar and quite comfortable combat system similar to XCOM but with some features from Dungeon and & Dragons and similar games a wide range to create your main character. In general, it's not a bad thing. I will not stop repeating that if you want to feel like a Special Forces soldier, then the best game for this is Ready or Not. Since the release of Early Access, the game has undergone a lot of changes, both in terms of fixing bugs and in terms of content. There are new missions here and different modes too, and even the main hub where you prepare for operations has been redone beyond recognition. Ideally, of course, you can still play the game with friends, it will be more interesting, but the atmosphere disappears at the same time. But if you play for the atmosphere, then of course, it's better to take bots in an armful, especially since they can be commanded adequately and they don't behave very stupidly here. In any case, the game is a build to give you several unforgettable evenings without strain. I suggest you relax your buns a little and play one of the best Anno 1800 urban planning games. In general, this is probably the only good game from Ubisoft in recent years, not counting Odyssey. Anno 1800 has gathered all the best from the games in the series. The most in-demand and interesting mechanics were put together and fueled with new, fresh ideas. In this game, you will be constantly busy with something. You don't have time to sit around deciding what to do next. Work is never long in coming. It is necessary to build the cities, establish production, build ships and lay trade routes, trade, colonize new islands and regions, send expeditions to new lands, collect animals, artifacts, plants for a zoo, museum, botanical garden. And this is only part of the gameplay. The very construction and planning of cities is so exciting that the clock runs at breakneck speed, which the game periodically reminds you of, encouraging you to drink a cup of coffee, stretch. But if you have spent a long time in the game world, The developers of Lies of P made a fatal mistake. The developers removed Danuvo from the game, literally for 10 minutes, for the sake of updating. Hard workers from the internet took advantage of this and leaked the game to the network without protection from half a kick. I really still recommend that you still support the developers at such moments, and I also usually buy games myself. Moreover, this game is worthy of it. Here we have a full-fledged analog of Bloodborne on PC, with excellent graphics, a more dynamic action game than an ordinary soul likes, well, stylistic 
stylistically, the game is cool. This whole mechanical Victorian era is very pleasing. In general, if you haven't played, I recommend it. It's gone. And here you will find an unrealistically cool 4x strategy with turn-based battles and a mountain of fantasy. Here you can create almost any combination of classic and not only fantasy. When you decide to reveal your people to the world, you decide who they are. For example, necromancer toads are dwarves, and during the game, they also evolve and can become, for example, dragons in addition to toads, and yes, dwarf dragons. Here, as you understand, there is a wonderful variety of game possibilities, wonderful design of units and environments. Consider there are three great games in this game, Civilization, Heroes of Might and Magic, Crusader Kings on Minimal. There is also a company and individual missions with their own worlds and backstories, and yet, this seems to be the latest developer studio that makes add-ons extremely enjoyable and diversifying the game. The most difficult thing here is not to be afraid of the great possibilities of the game. Otherwise, it's really top. well if you don't want to think, you don't want to bother. And in general, all you need is to shoot stupidly, then there is a wonderful Doom Eternal for you. It came out four years ago, but it's still good. Doom Eternal, with a serious face but with healthy self-irony, tells a story about a very angry man who is so angry that he rips all the guts out of devils with his bare hands. This is a 100% hit, just what is needed for the modern version of the meat shooter from the 90s, which has become a legend in our world. You you feel your inner power in Eternal 100% and we don't need more. I suggest you take a break and take a look at this cool RPG. Here, two special children must find their place in this complex world. They are endowed with the magic of the sun and moon to perform great tasks. The creatures of the villain Flashmancer have raged and threaten all living things. The game is made in the form of an old school looking, team based RPG with turn based battles for single player passage. There is no co op. At first glance, the game looks simple, but this impression quickly dissipates. Here we have a huge world with a complex, multi-level architecture that needs to be carefully studied. The action takes place on a dozen or one and a half large islands with an innumerable number of small locations. And there are just a lot of secrets in these locations. I won't spray too much about the details, just know that it has become the indie game of the year and everything is fine here. A huge complex world, a luxurious plot, great characters, gorgeous side quests, powerful battles with dozens of bosses and their minions, and many mysteries with puzzles. A little masterpiece. Well, you've probably heard about this game because it's a very popular Sniper Elite series. Today we have part 5. Well, because she's the last one and probably the best overall, there is a little lack of encouragement from the developers for passing without killing, which this part allows you to do like no other game in the series. But if in general, the best of the best, open, non-linear locations are waiting for you. A deep modification of the weapon that allows you to use any barrel the way you need, which of course is a bit at odds with his historicity, but who cares? A large number of side quests, notes, and other tinsel. In addition, they made an invasion mode, cool, but really not fully finalized. In the game, except that the plot is completely conditional, if only it was, but otherwise it is really on the level. Here in Dune Spice Wars, a new addition, House Vernius, was brought, which once again diversified the game. This is, if anything, a real-time strategy with four elements from the developers of my beloved Northgard. The global gameplay is well stylized to match the entourage of Herbert's universe. The key mechanics are the extraction of spices, to which absolutely everything is attached, from the army to political stability because there is no spice, no money, neither the emperor nor the council respects you. You end up like Duke Leto from the book, if you have read it, of course. And if there are plenty of spices, then your hands are untied, both in terms of economic victory and in terms of blunt slashing in the face. Although here, even the action is very strategic. We will not go into much detail. If you want thoughtful, not particularly hasty, but extremely interesting gameplay, so also in a good universe, you are here.
What about racing in the snow? You know, I don't have frequent roller skating guests because I don't really play in them and I don't really like them. But SnowRunner is a very specific race where you are more trying to stupidly move from your place than going somewhere. Because here you are waiting for a race on the fierce off-road. You will find harsh open spaces, powerful machines, and dozens of difficult tasks that can be performed in one person or in a co-op of up to four people if you want of course. At first, it may be difficult for you to figure it out. At least the game doesn't even have a plot, just separate missions where you have to plan rules, every maneuver, and use the right equipment to overcome obstacles. But over time, as you figure it out, buy a good all-terrain vehicle and put good tires on it, you will start to enjoy the game. And by the way, yes, DLC is released here often, and they are, by the way, very good. And finally, complete relaxation in general. Here is a game where you have to create your own zoo with a huge set of different animals. This game has no analogs and is even close. There are a lot of animal species, fluffy, cute, creepy, dangerous. There are not enough birds for some unknown reason, but who even looks at them in the zoo. Unless it's ostriches, of course. The construction is very diverse in terms of decoration, and I'm still silent about the exposition. There are a good 50 little critters there. In general, visitors walk here, animals chill, sleep, eat, and shit, and you clean up after them, loot money from hard workers, and expand. The road laying system here is really kind kind of dumb. Otherwise, it's a great game. Well, that's it. I hope you have found something worthwhile for yourself, and therefore, you have spent time on likes and subscriptions too. Well, Denis was with you as always, and all the best.